All right, what's going on, everybody? So, gonna give all of you my first impressions uh, for Salt and Sanctuary. Now, I never even knew about this game up until a few days around its release, which is very strange because I keep track of you know pretty much all video game release dates, both indie and AAA, and you know I never heard of this game. And I, you know, never even saw any gameplay, never even heard of it, which is, you know, I'm like, how didn't I hear about this game, you know, uh, or see it on any release date, date list or see any gameplay, especially for what it is. Uh, and it was released this Tuesday. I believe that was the 15th. So Salt and Sanctuary is a 2D uh, side scrolling Metroidvania um, style Souls game. So it's pretty much a 2D Souls game. So if you like Dark Souls or Bloodborne, then you'll probably like this game. Not as much because the fact that it's 2D does limit its potential. Being 2D obviously puts a lot of limits on it gameplay wise because all you can do is move left to right. So that really simplifies the formula of it being a Souls game. But um, it is f still fun at the foundation because it is you know the souls formula um if you've played any of the souls games or bloodborne then you know what this game is going to be uh you pick a class at the beginning um you do a little bit of customization the art style kind of reminds me of limbo um so like i said you pick your class you do a little bit a little bit of customization of how your character looks um you go through a section fighting enemies at the end of that section, it's uh you know it's the big boss fight. Um, if you die to any enemies, then that enemy uh, collects your salt. In this game, it's salt you lose. Uh, obviously, just like the Souls games, you use that salt to upgrade uh, to upgrade your character, and then you have your um, upgraded upgraded at attributes, uh, endurance strength dexterity uh of course you have your armor that you can find um i haven't i've only beaten the first boss so far um but i'm assuming you can also obviously upgrade weapons and find new weapons instead of bonfires or campsites there are uh, sanctuaries where, that you can go back um to refill your flask and refill your energy so pretty much all the mechanics or I, sh I should say the basic mechanics that you would expect to see in the souls game is in this game and you know it's it's obvious it's a shameless thing right they know they're using the souls formula and there's absolutely nothing wrong with that right um as i've said as long as a game is very intentional and it is obviously uh showing that they're using you know mechanics and the dna of another game and they execute it well or in another form then there's absolutely nothing wrong with that um because they know there's a market for this this type of game people love these type of games um is it as hard as dark soul the souls games or bloodborne I, from what i played gotten up to the first boss absolutely not um i don't think you know being a 2d game does deliver a different type of of uh, a different type of difficulty because you can still dodge you can you know switch weapons um, right now I'm the hunter class so the hunter class has a rope well not a rope a whip and a whip and a and a crossbow and then I can switch to a sword if I if I want to as my alternate weapon and of course I have my consumable items um, and then you have your gold which is the currency in the game like I said and, and your salt uh, is what you use to upgrade so and you can see the stamina and the health bar at the top everything pretty much reminds you of a souls game very much so yeah uh, like I said um, as far as what I've experienced it's not as hard it is you know these enemies are no pushover either um, you know some of these stronger enemies can kill you uh, with you know th three hits maybe I did die to the first boss the first time I beat him the second time so it's not like it's a complete pushover but like I said it's not the same challenge that a souls game w would give you it's just it's just different because you don't have that 3d uh, obviously um, aspect that gives you as you know gives you the variety and the versatility in the game and it also gives you a challenge but it also gives you an advantage you know being in 3d um, with the things you're capable of doing so it kind of cuts off that whole aspect of the game so it's just different 
So I'm having fun with it. I think it's a, a good little appetizer before Dark Souls 3 comes out. It's $17, um, if I didn't mention that. So, you know, I think, I think the price is worth it so far. I'm not sure of the length of the game. Um, probably, I would say it's probably a little bit longer than your uh, typical um, small project or indie game. Um, obviously not, you know, the 50 plus hours of an actual Souls game. I assume not. But I am having fun with the basic uh, gameplay of Salt and Sanctuary, just going through the, the enemy sections, dealing with the enemies, uh, ranking up. You know, I, I actually am doing a lot of farming. Uh, in Souls games, one of my favorite things to do, you know, is, is just the excitement of farming, you know, uh, just ranking up your character so you can be better prepared for, for the boss. You know, uh, and, you know, doing all that farming is exciting to me, and I, I like that in the that you know the foundation of a lot of these games some people like i spoke about it before and you know when i was doing my bloodborne video some people have this ridiculous theory that farming is in in, in rpgs is cheating or something well farming has been a thing that people did in rpgs since their like inception but like i said i'm not going to go into that again um so like i said let me know what y'all think i'm enjoying it it's 17 dollars. pick it up if you're interested and uh yeah i'm out of here peace